Well, hello again, friends. Welcome back to our study of the New City Catechism. Happy New Year. Hope that you had a great holiday celebration, Christmas and New Year's. A good couple weeks off. I know for you school kids, you're trying to get back into the swing of school. I hope that it's going well. Uh, press on. If you'll remember, when we were last together, uh, we talked uh, for a couple weeks about who Jesus was. Uh, about Jesus, our Redeemer, the fact that he, he is God and he is fully man, the fact that he came to redeem us from our sin and from having to fulfill the law perfectly. Well, today, as we jump back into the New City Catechism, I want to jump ahead to question and answer 30. And question and answer 30 brings to, uh, to our minds... And brings to our attention a very important word. It's the word faith. It's a word that connects us to the work and person of Jesus. The word faith. Now if you've been in the church uh, for any length of time, you've heard that word a lot. We talk about that word a lot. That we must have faith. We must have faith in Jesus Christ. But what exactly does that mean? I think sometimes in the world, uh, people who are not in the church, people who are not believers and followers of Jesus, um, I think that they think about faith as wishful thinking, almost like it's a wish. I sure hope that that happens. I don't know if it's going to happen. I have no certainty it's going to happen, but I have faith it will happen. When we talk about faith, faith is not something like a wish. It's not something that we really hope for, but we don't know if it's going to happen. Faith is something much more certain and much more concrete than that. And our question and answer helps us understand fuller what it means to have faith. And so listen as I read the question and answer. And I'm going to separate the quest or the answer into three parts. And you'll see me uh, designate those three parts. So the question is this. What is faith? In Jesus Christ. And here's the answer. Faith in Jesus Christ is acknowledging the truth of everything that God has revealed in his word, trusting in him, and also receiving and resting on him alone for salvation as he is offered to us in the gospel. So three parts in this answer that are helpful for us to unpack for just a moment. And the way I want you to think about it, those three parts that I just went through, is I want you to think about your head, I want you to think about your heart, and I want you to think about your hands. Your head, your heart, and your hands. First of all, your head. We must acknowledge the truth of everything that God has revealed in his word. Faith begins by knowing who Jesus is, by knowing and understanding what he has done. And by recognizing what that means for us. And so all of, uh, all of the stuff that we've talked about in terms of him being the second person of the Trinity and being our substitute and being our redeemer and being our sacrifice for sins, we have to know all those things in our heads. That's where faith begins, with that knowledge. But that knowledge alone is not enough. Because the Bible says, even the demons believe... And yet the demons are not followers of Jesus. And so it's more than just knowing. It's more than just our heads. It begins there. But then it must move to our hearts. When we think about our hearts, we think about receiving that knowledge. Trusting in that truth. It's not something that's just out there. That, yeah, Jesus was all those things and that's nice. And I I know that in my head. But no, I actually believe that. I receive that in my heart. I recognize that all those things that Jesus is, he is for me and for my life. And then the last part, receiving and resting on him alone for salvation, that has to do with our hands. If you go to Ascension, you know that when Pastor Ed or when, 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 when Pastor Nate, uh, at the end of the service, when we pronounce the benediction, we put our hands up and we, re- we say, receive these words from God for you. 
and your mom and dad, and maybe you too, if you're not doing this, you're certainly welcome to do this and encourage you to do this. But a lot of the congregation will put their hands out like this. They'll put their hands out to, to signify that they are receiving these words, that they are grabbing a hold of those words. As I say, the Lord bless you and keep you. They are taking those words and they're saying, those are, those are my words and I'm going to live in those words. I'm going to live what I believe. And that's the third aspect of faith. Our head, we must believe and know who Jesus is and what he's done for us. Our hearts, we must trust and recognize that those things are true and that they are for us. And then we must receive and rest and live as if those things were truly true because they are. They are for us. Galatians 2.20 says, I have been crucified with Christ. It's no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. The life I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. You see, Paul, who wrote those words, he understood. He, he knew who Jesus was. He met Jesus on the road to D Damascus, and the Lord Jesus had changed him and had renewed his heart and now the life that he was living was a life of receiving and resting in Jesus and following him in, in, in every way and with all that was in him. What is faith in Jesus Christ? Acknowledging the truth of everything that God has revealed. Trusting in him and receiving and resting on him alone for salvation as he has offered to us in the gospel. Faith is a gift to us. Faith is something that the Holy Spirit gives us, and it's something that, that we pray for more of. The disciples in Luke 17, 5 said, Lord Jesus, increase our faith. I, I believe, some, some other disciples said, I believe, but help my unbelief. And so I hope that you guys not only know who Jesus is, but that you know he's for you and that you trust him and that you will continue to pray for the faith to rest and to receive all that he is and all that he offers and to live your life following him and for him. Let me pray. Father in heaven, I thank you for this wonderful truth of believing in the Lord Jesus, of having faith, of resting and receiving and trusting in all that he is for us. I pray that you would give each person, each kid who's watching more faith to more deeply understand, to more deeply trust and to a greater extent receive all that you are for us. Father, this I pray in Jesus' great name. Amen. Well, thanks for joining me once again. Uh, we'll continue our study next week, so have a great week. Bye-bye.